drink. Oh. It is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, <laughs> welcome to, I guess, what is going to be episode zero, 00, or episode 0, I don't know if you say both zeros, of Creative Minds Podcast, what we're going to call it right now. And that's what we're here to talk about is what we're going to call it, what we want it to look like, and how we want this to function. I believe we're on air right now and live, and we're going to be turning this into a podcast later. If you are not um, particularly fond of our faces, you can at least just see our voices without them in not too long. We are missing two people right now because of technical issues. Both of those get resolved. Uh, Dave Robison of the Roundtable Podcast is working very, very diligently on rebooting his computer right now and getting up to speed with us, so hopefully he's going to be joining us in the very short future. And Nimit Malavia, who you all know, um, should be here also any minute now. We'll see how it goes. But we're just going to kind of get rolling because we're trying to be punctual, if nothing else. And I'm going to let everyone in give a brief introduction of themselves if they would like to, uh, starting with Dennis, because you're on the far left of my little avatar screen. OK. Hi, everybody. Uh, Dennis Kleinman. I am presently narrating the entries of uh, Mar our character, Marcellus. And bringing to life uh, his exciting adventures that seem to be changing day by day. So it's a pleasure to be here. It's always a pleasure to have you. you I can say, wait, as, soon as, as soon as Dennis logs in, like the sex appeal level of the audio goes through the roof. So no other reason we need to have him on here just to draw more people in. OK. <laughs> I'm all <Jenna>. for it. <laughs> we appreciate it. Jenna, Thank you. tell us about yourself. My name is Jenna Stanton, and my role is editor. I have been involved with editing all of Jay's books. I haven't edited Into the Nanton, but I have been involved in the past, well, soon to be five books that Jay has written. So, and I, I love getting to edit his books. Thanks. I paid her to say that. So <laughs> really, have, really highly appreciate it. And then last but not least, Megan is the only person so far that has yet to grace our screens and is going to be contributing tonight as well. Megan, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Megan, and I am working with Jay in a marketing and communications capacity to help more people fall in love with his work and the Into the Nanton series. And it's been fantastic so far. She actually works really, really hard and has been very, obviously, punctual and professional. And basically, everybody that we has spoken so far is amazing. The two that are missing, I can't speak for them because who knows where they are. But the ones we have on board right now are fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in because everybody actually knows what it is we're trying to accomplish here today. And we don't have to worry too much about Dennis, or not Dennis, sorry, about Dave and Nimit um, catching up. I think they're going to be able to jump in right as soon as they get here. So um, basically, I've been kind of formulating the idea of trying to uh, offer a little bit more of creative support to the community that is out there. There are a lot of really lonely writers. I have been one of those. And that changed for me when I started going to conventions, honestly. Um, being able to rub shoulders with other authors and creators and publishers. and Basically, there was just a missing link for me in that peerage that is now getting filled. And I'm kind of addicted to it, and I need more of it. And I recognize that there are a lot of people out there that can't afford to go to conventions. Maybe they don't come close enough to them. Or even people that go to conventions but aren't really sure how to plug in. And that's just kind of a small microcosm of the entire creative sphere. That's just kind of what really got the wheels turning for me. And then this weekend at NerdCon, I was approached by a large number of people who wanted to know how I did what I did, wanted to know how I got to that table that I was sitting at with all the beautiful artwork, with um, the, you know, these books that everybody was, I feel like I'm tooting my own horn, but everybody was saying, you know, looked so good and professional. How did, how did I get there? What, was, what did I do to get there? And then a whole bunch of other questions have come in actually through email in the last couple of days from a variety of people. And so on the one hand, I think it'd be very valuable for me to perhaps write some more blog entries, specifically about writing and publishing. But we have available to us in the form of the people that you see, I assume, at the bottom of your screen right now, and those who will be joining us, a breadth of knowledge and experience that spans across a whole bunch of different professions and passions. And so for us right now, the opportunity is to dig deep 
thus the idea of creative minds. We're going to open up a mind shaft into each person's brain and just go at it and try to just get at the treasure that is located deep within the brains and souls of everybody that's sitting on your screen right now. So in doing that, we also have more friends, more connections outside of the Into the Nanton staff that go into publishing, um, audio, art, video, music, a lot of different connections that I think would be very beneficial to start pulling in because especially as we do cross-platform creation, we're going to see a lot more need for all of those different arenas and being able to work together, but also being able to encourage the people that are in those arenas specifically. I think that it, we, we're only going to be served well by bolstering that creative community. So I think that that's going to be incredibly valuable as we go. So with that, um, I've asked everybody to kind of um, spend a little time thinking about any questions or suggestions they have as we go. But the proposed format for the podcast, and basically we'll be taking it straight out of this Google Hangout, is that we meet twice a month, uh, at basically the second Wednesday, like right now, and the fourth Wednesday of every month. And we dedicate each episode in a month to one topic so that we can go a little bit deeper on the second episode or explore a different avenue. And that we focus on that topic for two episodes, that we dig deep into it, that we bring in different guests and speak to them and kind of see what we can get out of that. Um, from there, I guess it's kind of open to see what, what you guys are thinking. What, what are you thinking? And I can start calling on people, too, if I need to. So th that's totally fine. But we have Dave joining us. Dave, you're here! I know! This is the, her this is the hazard of inviting... Uh, a, a theater major into your group. They're 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 just bound and determined to try and make a dramatic entrance. <laughs> that was very well timed because I just got to the point where I was saying, so if anybody Where's has Dave? anything to say, <laughs> <laughs> kablam. So Dave, why don't you give us a, a quick? I kind of introduced you and I, I pumped you once and then refused to pump you twice. Why don't you give us the self pump? The self pump. Okay. Yeah, on, on your um, first on your first round. All right, so uh, uh, basically I'm probably best known as the host of the Roundtable podcast where we invite writers onto the show to pitch a story idea to us and our esteemed guest host who is a writer or a, an editor, somebody who's been around the block a few times who actually lends some credibility to our ideas, uh, which is always a bonus. Um, we've been doing that for about three years now. Um, so in addition to that, I also run Vex Mosaic, which is a new uh, online e-zine uh, where we explore uh, culture and society through the lens of speculative media. Uh, and uh, I'm also in the process of evolving a, a shared world called the Shattered Worlds, uh, where uh, basically I'm hoping to build a story world that we can invite anybody into and to explore some aspect of the world or develop some character or some item or whatever. Uh, uh, so, so basically, I'm all about exploring the creative process and using it as a tool to understand the world and ourselves a little bit better. There, that's that's my self pump. That was a great self pump. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can get the self pump award of the day, and we've also been graced by the beautiful Nimit Malavia. <laughs> hey guys. Nimit, who needs no real introduction, really. But Nimit, why don't you tell us what is it that you do with Into the Nanton, and at large as well? Um, with Into the Nanton, I am responsible for interpreting Jay's wonderful story and sort of creating the journal entries that we presume Marcellus is making in the jungle with whatever spare time he has between being hunted by things and fighting and nearly dying and stuff. Um, and then at large, I'm a freelance illustrator, primarily working in comic books. Uh, so I do sequential stories and covers for um, a lot of the bigger publishers. And also image making in general, but we can get into that later. Yeah, well, you're basically a jack of all visual trades and uh, pretty much just amazing at what you do. So jack of all trades, master of many, actually, as it turns out in your case. So I just kind of, before you guys joined us, I just went over what it is we're hoping to get out of this and kind of went back to just saying that I would love this to be a place where we foster stronger creative community and give people 
the tools and the opportunities that they need to grow in their individual arenas, but also to bridge gaps into the adjacent creative arenas that they can then go on and make cross-platform, um, cross-media stuff that they can actually, you know, become hopefully professionals at what it is that they're passionate about, I guess is a good way of putting it. And that the format that we're looking at doing right now is every other week that we would meet on the second and fourth Wednesdays, um, that I probably am going to be the regular host, so you guys don't stress too much out, but that you'll also probably be regular guests, I hope, you, you'll come back. Um, and that we'll talk, that we'll focus. Dave, you and I really got a chance to talk this over, and you're the genius really behind all of this. I'm not <laughs> don't pin this on me, Swanson. No <laughs> way, Jose. I ain't oh, taking that rap. <laughs> you're, you'll be surprised at how much rap you might take after this is all over. And uh, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and try to focus on one topic per month. That way we can either dig deeper into something if we really strike a chord, or we can go a different route with the second one the second episode per month, and um, I've actually had quite a lot of uh, input coming in from the internet already and from NerdCon, which has been really good, um, but you guys have all had some time to think about it, so Dave, why don't you actually, since you're kind of the brainstorming champion, why don't you take us down a little bit of the brainstorming path right now and tell us what you're thinking? Sure, absolutely. Well, see, and here's the thing about podcasts in general. If they're not adding to the conversation, uh, uh, they're 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 not really in service to anything, um, and and this this concept that that you have, Jay, of of exploring uh, uh, kind of the fringes. I mean, I met, got a little background. I met Jay at Worldcon uh, uh, last August, and I was impressed by not only the stories he was telling, but the ways that he was telling them and the mediums that he was exploring to to put those stories out there. Uh, uh, you know, you can call it transmedia, you can call it multimedia, or whatever. Uh, but I really think that this is an important frontier in storytelling in this digital age, where people are finding new ways to consume their content. So, with with Jay and all of you basically already engaged in that that modality of of conversation of storytelling. Uh, uh, I think it's important to find to to plant a pole in the sand and create a beachhead and say we're going to talk about this. We're going to explore all the different ways that storytelling is being conducted or can be conducted uh, in this modern age. Whether it be web comics, whether it be transmedia, whether it be you know video YouTube channels. I mean, obviously there are a wealth of platforms that are being used for this, and and having a place like this this vlog vidcast podcast uh, where people can go and know that you're gonna point them hey let's explore in depth this aspect of storytelling in the modern age let's go over here and look at the back end and see how it's monetized how it's produced how it's works and explore some of the stories being told and I think that's gonna be huge I think that would be an incredible asset and an addition to the podcast conversation. That's that's my take on it. Fantastic. And I think one of the questions that I have then to follow up is how, and I think that's probably actually what I'm trying to get at the root of here, is how do we focus this then so that we maintain that common thread throughout, let's say, 24 episodes in a year, and continue to add to the conversation in a way that's valuable um, to more than just ourselves. Well, let's let's start. Let's let's go once around the table and get everybody's take on that initial seed that I tossed out there. Uh, uh, if there's agreement, if there's a concurrence, uh, uh, then then by all means stand up and and raise your raise your storytelling flag high. Uh, uh, but also, uh, what additions or what aspects of what was tossed out there is intriguing to you, and and what would you want to explore moving forward? So, so Nimit, you're the last one in. You're the first one up, pal. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts on this topic, man? Oh uh, man, do you mind if we get a moment? I'd love to hear some what you guys have to think before jumping into this. Oh, he's passing the from baton. The passing the baton. All right. All right we, one pass. You get one pass per episode. <laughs> <laughs> so who's next? Who has something? To, who has thoughts on the subject? 
Oh, everybody has thoughts. I, know, I haven't right? been introduced to everyone, so I can't call people out by name. Well, let me do a brief introduction for you, and I think I know who I'm going to call out by name when we're done, actually. Uh, first off is Dennis Kleiman, who I will bring up right now. Dennis is the voice of Marcellus. You've probably heard him if you've listened to any of the uh, podcasts that's going right now. Yes. Jenna is my editor. She hangs out and edits and makes me look good because I couldn't do it without her. She may not make me look... <laughs> I look terrible and Into the Mansion without her, but she's around for all of my books. Megan works with us for um, our marketing side of things. She's a, a very new addition, and she's doing a great job so far um, helping to spread the word about Into the Mansion and build uh, the brand around me as well. And then we all know Nimit because his hair is luscious and amazing and his, <laughs> just, just like his artwork. So with that, I would love to call Jay, on... you got to stop reading my bio off my website like that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stop <laughs> posting all those selfies. It's just... <laughs> so I'm going to actually jump to Dennis, who actually also has some amazing hair, and we're going to ask him uh, what he thinks about the idea moving forward. Um... You know, it's 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 very interesting. I think we are definitely entering some new ground here. Um, certainly, you know, one of the things that strikes me, being the voice of of Marcellus, is the concept of uh, serializing the work. Uh, it, you know, conjunct in conjunction with with the way you're releasing each entry on a on a periodic basis. Um, what, what's very interesting for me is that it, it, it takes me back to my youth. I actually grew up in South Africa, and we didn't have television until I was almost a, a late teenager. So radio became an extremely, it was our only form of entertainment. And so thinking about podcasts and the way that, that the, the whole story is being serialized and, and having people sort of, Creating this sort of intrigue where they're where they're waiting for the next one, and and you you know they want to sort of tune in for the next one. I think that has a, a it, it's almost going back old school, but it has a very fresh take to it. And I, I think you know uh, this to me stri it, it was was one of the things I really got very attracted about in, in in the whole project was that real time release of of information, um, and I think that that that's a huge aspect to to market. Uh, for the project, because it does stand itself alone compared to just re you know getting an audio book. Sure. So that 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 really sort of um, I feel has uh, has 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 taken a, a great stand. I I actually, funnily enough, um, have a, a an audio book I did about a year and a half ago that uh, has been released in a very similar format on audiobook radio. Uh, there's an internet site now called Audiobook Radio, and um, I, I think focusing on this uh, on this concept is really a way to draw people in and create the intrigue and the excitement to listen to the next release. So that's my my input on on at this point. I think that that I feel is is a is just a great direction to go in. Dennis, you really hit on something that's critical, I think, in in contemporary fiction, and that is serialized fiction. There's there's serialbox.com that is geared exclusively towards the serialized release of stories. And you're right. right, there is an immediacy there. There is that eagerness for the people that are connected to the story. Ooh, when does the next journal entry drop? You know, right. when does when does the next segment in this drop? And the cool thing is is that we're dealing with uh, shorter segments, uh, especially with Into the Nanton, but in general, the the people's attention spans are pretty much as long as their commute uh, <laughs> for a lot of this stuff. Uh, uh, so you see podcasters targeting 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, a lot of the audio fiction podcasts do the same thing for right. that very reason. And right. so we can get smaller bits in there. So that's excellent. That's an awesome thing to explore. And finding yeah. new ways and new opportunities to serialize your fiction is definitely one of those things, Jay, that you should probably explore. Um, I've got some. Uh, I've got some ideas to throw around, but I'll. Thought you might. Thought I'll you might. <laughs> I'm saving those. All right. Uh, since we're going left to right now, Jenna, what what are your thoughts coming into this? What what should we explore? I, I... I remember, was it like six years ago you pitched this idea to me? Like, of the Northern <laughs> Range. And, like, I, I'm telling you, it was probably six years ago, and he was really starting with the Vitalis Chronicles and going, you know, I really I want to, like, long-term set this publication up or 
this publishing group that can help authors figure it all out. It's like, yeah, that'd be cool. It'd be fun to be a part of that. And so it's exciting to see it all come to life. I mean, we've talked about it for so long. And I you know for me it would be interesting to explore, like, how much uh, is what you are producing and giving out, like, what is it worth? Mm -hmm. And setting up pricing. I know for me as an editor, like, how much should I charge? Should it, I, like, I'm not sure. <laughs> rate versus value and like for someone who's an emerging writer or yeah. an emerging artist like who wh how do you price how do you set up how do you take out the sentimental value out and find out like the monetary value so that would be something I'd be interested in discussing Great. Sure, especially with all the new indie uh, self-pub uh, authors yeah. coming out there. You're finding a lot more uh, independent artists offering cover art. You're finding a lot more people like yourself, editors, who are offering their services that aren't maybe the professional editorial house on Wall Street or, or Madison Avenue, wherever those professional editorial houses Where are. Where are those? Where are editors? those? I don't they're not, know. They're not in Elkhart, Indiana. I will play that. <laughs> there you go, exactly. <laughs> But those those are perfectly valid questions, and and you're not alone in asking those, Jenna. Uh, yeah. And and I I think those that that professional aspect, you know, it, it's it's reasonable for people to want to monetize their 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 time and their money. And if if there is money being made, then there should be money going back out. And and how does that all work? Yes, absolutely. I think that's that's fabulous. I think that's great too, because I think there's a lot of uh, cloak and dagger about the whole pricing scheme of things. And yes. There's a lot of there's a big challenge in that because I think one of the values is the ability to um, negotiate. So one of the people that actually emailed me from NerdCon, one of her big concerns was actually looking at and talking about this very thing as far as how much should she pay for um, this audio studio that she's going to produce her podcast in. She hadn't heard from them in a while, and so she's wondering like it's going to kind of absorb all of my budget to do this and they're not really being very responsive and and just to encourage people that you have the ability you have the freedom to shop around to negotiate to try and find something that works for you like you shouldn't be trying to screw anybody else but at the same time your time is valuable your effort is valuable and what little money you have needs to be put to work in the best way possible so I think that goes both ways both on the yeah. making money side of things and on the spending money side of things like when you're approaching an artist how do you negotiate with them to make sure that they still feel valued and that they're they're making the money that they're worth but that you're not overspending because if you're independent you don't have a lot of money with which to spend. Sure. Sure. So that's... So when, go ahead, sorry. So one of the things that I think about, Jay, when, you know, so I'm always thinking about from this, when I'm involved in this conversation from the standpoint of how do we position you and your body of work and set you aside as an expert as a way to put you out in the media and to communicate you to bring in a greater audience to the body of work. And I think one of the ways that you can look at using this forum that we're talking about to mm -hmm. distinguish yourself is setting it up really as almost like a business resource tool for people who maybe don't consider themselves entrepreneurial but by the very nature of what they're doing are. And yeah. I think when you talk about authors and artists and people who are doing the types of things you're doing, it's more about the work to them and more about, you know, the writing and the deadline and the completing that artwork and less about the nitty gritty of, of how do I run a business, which is essentially what they're doing. How do I monetize, yeah. which is, you know, conversations that you and I have had. How do we monetize? How do we grow a client base? How do we launch a marketing and promotions campaign? Those types of things. And I think part of this can be that business resource to people who maybe that wouldn't have come across anywhere in their training or anywhere in their background and they don't know where to find that type of resource or access that type of resource specific to the industry they're in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's really valuable because I, I, one of those, I, that's, I, that's what I would like to offer people and to help them because I think that that's a very overwhelming arena. Even for me, I know that it's been a huge help to have you around and on board now because you bring a level of organization to things that I just didn't have, or and I certainly didn't have time for. And um, helping just to bridge those gaps and even create um, a pathway for people to follow, 
while they're getting started, even if it's just simple things that can help them get set up one step at a time, I think it would be really, really helpful where I kind of have bumbled my way through to this point as best I can. <laughs> and I bumble okay. I'm, a, I'm an okay bumbler, but there's only so much bumbling you can do. I was going to say, considering the amount of bumbling that you do, you do it pretty well. Like, there's so many so many plates spinning Practice in the air at any given perfect, time. Right? <laughs> All right, Nimit, that's it. You're, you're up, man. We've, All right, we've I got to go. See you guys. <laughs> ah, no, sit your ass No, no. Um, it's, actually, I think Megan touched on a lot of the things that were of interest to me as well because, I mean, while it, the discussion about the product that you're making and sort of the artful quality of doing it and how it's perceived and blah, 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 all that stuff is a really fascinating discussion. I think the real interest is in sort of, um, I guess, the brand management, quote, unquote, if you want to put it that way, mm -hmm. and sort of peeking into how you turn that into a reality, how you go from it being sort of um, an interest to something you can do professionally, something that you can sort of rely on and count on in a lot of ways and something that can help improve your brand as a whole because I think in general as like we're all independent artists here or we all have our sort of creative endeavors and then people think of the business part of it as like this gross word but it's not there's an artful quality to that and it'd be nice to have that discussion out there a little bit more because you've like I find that a lot of cases it gets glossed over just mm -hmm. because it's like people are wary of oh competition or they're wary about like putting that information out there and like Yep. you know, what that does for their reputation, blah, blah, blah. But it's not, like, if I found, if anything, the conversations I have with my peers about this sort of stuff, it just helps push us forward and it helps us open up ideas to different avenues. Because, I mean, in the case, I think what's interesting about this is that this is a non-conventional project mm -hmm. or it's a non-conventional media or the way we put it out there comes out in a lot of different formats clearly like almost every format until you get the budget for those videos or whatever. But like, <laughs> it, and so it's, it kind of opens up the idea to other creators to be like, oh, cool, you know, like my training and practice has always been in this one arena, but maybe it's a matter of moving it this way or maybe like, you know, sort of like getting inspiration from a thing not by looking at, other things that are similar, but something that's totally dissimilar. So I think if we can have the conversation kind of go in the direction of kind of exposing more of that, like the business side of it, and sort of how we flex all this stuff. Also, it'd be interesting to have a talk about like how to manage um, such a high output of content because uh, for me, it's like this is the in the last few years. It's because a lot of output going out there, but it's like how do you manage the certain quality? How do you sort of work within that so that you're delivering? And it, it's something that I struggle with, but it's also something I'm so curious about. And whenever I hear how other people do it, it's kind of either helps inform me or inspire me or lets me like reshape that discussion for myself or with others, kind of thing. Cool. Actually, Jay, you kind of set up a perfect uh, uh, model for this, if you think about it. If you're, if you're talking about doing two episodes a month, uh, then take the first episode of the month and explore the creative side of whatever aspect of storytelling you want to explore and, and keep that conversation very focused on the creation of the art and the different possibilities and, and processes in there. And then in the second piece... Look at the business side. Look yeah. at the back end. Examine how you would monetize it. Get get Megan's insight in there. Get Jenna's insight in there. Get whoever your, your guests are and say, okay, we've talked about making this fabulous artwork and making it awesome. Now, what are the what are the models for monetizing it? What are the distribution frameworks mm. for getting it out there? Blah, blah, blah. And, and that would give you this wonderful one-two punch of the creative exploration and the monetization. That would be fabulous. I think that would be great. And honestly, I, this is something I wrote down, and I wrote a little bit of a blog post about this that we'll share later. But the, I think that it's important to remember, because Nimit touched on this as far as the, the competitive nature of things, how people are worried about losing money, losing business to other artists effectively. And I think that it's really important to remember that the only zero-sum game involved here is time. Um, at least from the way that I see it, in that an individual who's going to consume story literally only has so much time. Um, and you were, that's kind of the only area that you're really ever going to end up, I feel like, truly competing is that 
um, people can only give so much of their time. But what we've seen over the course of uh, history, moder very modern history, is that shift towards spending more money on luxury, more money on entertainment, more money on travel, all these things. And those industries are growing and they're going to continue to grow. There's no sign that they're going to stop. And the fact is that there's a lot of room for more people to be creating, more people to be living off of that, to be uh, thriving in that environment. We don't have to clamp down on that and keep people out of it actively. I think that enabling people to participate in that and helping them to understand it better, helping them to be better educated, make better decisions will only, like Nimitz said, help pull all of us forward together rather than us trying to shove off of each other's faces from the crowd while we're trying to clamber up. So I, I personally, I would prefer to be a part of a team working together than fighting against everyone by myself trying just to scramble. Well, there's strength in unity, obviously. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's, I think that's a very important thing. One, one thing that strikes me just about this whole conversation as well is that, you know, when you have components involved like we all are, we are components of the Into the Nanton project, we, are all, we all have a certain amount of time that we have to put in and I think, you know, one of the, one of the things is what, you know, what happens if someone for some reason uh, cannot do what he is supposed to do or she is supposed to do mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a time frame, um, how does it affect the other artists you know, on the project? How does it affect the project as a whole? Yeah. And I, I think that's, that's an important aspect that you know, others who might ultimately get into this type of work would want to know and, and, and we could potentially guide them in. So um, you know, I'm very cognizant of the fact that when I get you know, 10 more entries, I want to get them done as quickly as possible. Uh, for example, I'm, I've got to be away in, in 10 days on a trip mm -hmm. uh, um, with something else that I'm doing. And I don't want that to ever impact the movement of the, of the project. So I think I sent you an email about that, Jay, you saying, yeah. you know. So, you know, I, I think that's another aspect to this whole process that we're all dealing with is our commitment to, to the project as a whole and how it affects the project as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. I think that's really good. I'm writing this all down on this envelope. It's getting destroyed. So. <laughs> that, is, that is the first time I've ever seen Jay take notes, by the way. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and the other the other factor uh, to keep in mind here is, you know, to to look at the community that we're building, because uh, uh, one of the one of the primary reasons anybody does a podcast is because they're looking for their tribe. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, mm -hmm. they they might you know be wanting to monetize a book or or get attention for something, but ultimately, when you scrape away all of the other priorities, you're looking for your people. And being aware of who our people are for this particular podcast, mm -hmm. uh, and and serving them, and making sure that we're providing them, providing means for them to engage with the podcast, not just in terms of consuming it, but also feedback about it, and suggestions and insights, uh, uh, and fostering that community of professionals that would want to participate in this. And I can think of about five off the top of my head that would go, "Holy crap! I got to be in on this. This is awesome." Uh, so yeah, yeah. I I think that's I think that's another factor to keep in mind is is who are we targeting uh, uh, for our community and also the community of creatives that we're going to be drawing from to expand this conversation. And I think to piggyback on Dave's point and to go back to what he said a little bit earlier, structuring it the way that he mentioned about having the creative half in the first part of the month and then the business half in the second half of the month also goes to that automatic draw to bring people back a second time. So if they, again, being the one who's always thinking about the business and the retention part of it, that's that automatic retention aspect into it and that automatic kind of self-promotion already built in. If we're doing this, you have to come back for the second part to find out the rest of it. You know, whether we do business or creative first or however we structure that. And so you've got the these people you're already targeting and building in, and then you're already building in a mechanism to make sure they come back the next time. It's a micro serial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. It's a one-two punch, baby. There you go. <laughs> the never-ending series of two-parters. I like that. Yeah.
Yeah. Well, All right. I mean, then there'll always be the 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 one-offs and the the panel discussions. I mean, Nimitz' uh, uh, discussion of productivity uh, uh, and and putting that quality out there, and and Dennis's concern about making sure that you're contributing to the project. I mean, those don't necessarily fit into the framework of creative process and and business back end. Uh, so you can have one-off panels where you say, let's talk about productivity, let's talk about project management. You know, mm -hmm. let's talk about these other skills that are essential to both the creation of the art and the distribution of it to the people that want to consume it. Yeah, they're all integral parts. Exactly. Very much so. Very much so. Mm -hmm. All right. That's very, very good. Um, we're, we're at about... This is a question, actually, as well. How long do we want this to run? Because... We have a tendency as a group to just go ahead and talk <laughs> forever because <laughs> we, we, like, we like each other's faces and we have a couple of voices among us that are just pleasant to listen to. So, <laughs> so along those lines, I, I mean, um, yours, uh, Dave, the Roundtable podcast goes for like an hour, right? Yeah, and, and my numbers kind of reflect that. Uh, uh, it takes some serious <laughs> commitment to, to want to sit in on an hour of brainstorming. Now, that's not to say I haven't built an audience over three years of podcasting. Uh, uh, we average about five to six hundred downloads per episode over the course mm -hmm. of a month, which is, which is cool, which is great. I'm happy with that. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it, well, it, it is, but it's not 10,000. And it never will be because there aren't 10,000 people that are going to sit for an hour while we blather and, and froth about, uh, about story. Um, so, you know, I, the, the, there are two segments of the roundtable. And the 20 minutes with segment is usually right around 40 minutes. It's 20 mm -hmm. minutes with and it's 40 minutes. Yes, I know. <laughs> don't, don't, don't ask. It's twice <laughs> the value. Twice the value and twice the time, exactly. But, but we always consistently get better hits on that mm. episode than we do on the workshop episodes. Uh, so so I would I would urge us to stick between you know once you once you hit the half hour mark, mm -hmm. start wrapping up. If if okay. you haven't wrapped up by the half hour mark, everybody just you know look at your clock, go, oh crap, it's been a half hour. We need to take this to the final stage and wrap it up. Uh, uh, and just have everybody be on the same page about that. And I, that would be my recommendation. A half hour to forty minutes, no more. All right. That sounds about fair. That's usually about what I'm consuming when I'm listening to things. And I, th I think as part of that, what we have to do is we really have to be pretty specific about what each uh, hangout is going to cover. Uh, mm -hmm. There has to be a, a, you know, points that we talk about, and we have to try and stick to that. And people have to, in a sense, stick to it at a, at a certain time frame. So um, I think it has to be fairly structured. As well. Yeah. Say that again, Jenna. I would say a degree of preparation. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. For for everybody, you know, if if there are target guests that are going to be a part of, you know, that are going to be the, the the representatives of this creative form, uh, uh, then you don't know what questions you want to ask them in advance. And everybody who's going to be participating, come up with that list of questions. Jay, you as the as the the buck stopper, you pick which questions are actually going to be fielded, and you can gauge with that then, you know, exactly how much time you have. And and control you know when you go from this segment to that segment when this segment this question to that question and so on, kind of like the presidential debates. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> Only much cooler. Much Absolutely. Different. No question <laughs> about <laughs> that. <laughs> well, at least with hopefully a few insults. I don't know. We might we might devolve at some point, but we'll find out. All right. Well, with that in mind, in our time frame in mind, is there any are there any other points that we'd really like to highlight, anything we'd like to bring up that we that you feel like we need to bring up here, we can always continue this discussion via email later. Um, Megan, I'm going to start with you. So the only thing I have is kind of logistic type things. Or as you're thinking about the way that you structure it, will there be recurring content that is the same that people can get used to and experience every time that we have it so they start to to hear and experience the recurrent themes about Jay Swanson and Into the Nanton and the body of work and and the podcast, you know, what you're doing here with it. Um, so, you know, is that intro always the same or is the type, you know, the type of question or the structure always the same as you're looking to kind of build in that feel and that theme and the, you know, kind of the pros of the way that it happens. 
Um, so that's something that I would think about. That's very good. OK. Um, and I definitely have actually talked to some musician friends about h hooking us up with some intro music and so forth. So <laughs> I know Dave in particular very happy. Um, all right. Dennis, what are your thoughts as we part ways this evening? Um, just once again, I think preparation is the key and and uh, all agreeing and, and being part of the same subject matter, um, really sort of just planning for that and, and tr you know, obviously bringing some, some really exciting content to try and attract more people to to watch this and to, to become, to, to want to look at the next one, be available again in two weeks' time. So we've got to keep that intrigue going. Sounds good. So we need to have regular, like, stunts. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like that. And, and Jay, I thought of one more thing. Yeah. So it goes back to really kind of jumping the Wayback Machine with me to traditional marketing for a second. But um, the importance of having an editorial calendar mm. that yeah. we don't necessarily have to be militant about sticking to, but if you're going to be inviting people who are going to be guests and we're going to need to be on their calendar in advance and we're going to need to know what we're talking about and there's a certain element of prep work that goes into it for the people who are on our end as the team, um, having a calendar two to three months out to say this is what we're going to be talking about, these are our topics, these are our, our ideal guests, these are our backup guests if our ideal guests aren't available, um, having that sort of structured element to it as far as preparation will probably save us in the long run. I'm all about editorial calendars. I have no problems with that. Can I also say that I love the fact that Dave is smoking? <laughs> it's so great. I saw little puffs of smoke popping up every once in a while. It's you, dude. Oh my gosh, you you were made for video. You really were made for video. <laughs> all right, Jenna, what are your thoughts as we part ways this evening? Uh, well, Megan stole mine. Um, <laughs> I like, I totally echo you. Um, I mean, I have a nine-month-old, and my life is a little chaotic. And so knowing ahead and being able to plan and saying, okay, I am going to be involved with this one, this one, this one, not with this one, and especially like thinking ahead a couple months. And so I would definitely agree that having a calendar and thinking ahead would be helpful. Yes. Fantastic. No off, no off the cuff, shooting from the hip. All right. Not for the moms. <laughs> <laughs> not for the moms. Nimit, you're not a mom. What do you want? <laughs> More ad living. Uh, I think just a, a little addition to Dennis's thought. Uh, it'd be nice, like preparation on what we plan to talk about, or at least in terms of just subject matter, because I think what's re what could be engaging, especially if they're going to be like two parters, or that's the main format month, or for every two episodes, would be to have, like, put out topics or ideas that sort of, like, relate to what we all do, what we all tackle, and then everybody just sort of come at it with their different perspectives. So I guess it's just mm -hmm. a matter of, like, finding subjects that sort of vary at, or that sort of cover all bases between all of us. I like, I really like the, I really like the way you put that as far as relating it back to what we already do so we can talk about it in a way about how we tackle it. I think that that I, I think we were I think I just like the way you put that. So it was very very good. I'm definitely writing that down. Cool. You'd be very proud of me, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> okay, so I guess since I am uh, Dave, actually I ha we did not go to you for any parting thoughts. I need your wonderful brain to get some work done here right now. Excellent. I I will I will first say uh, uh, the idea of preparation and knowing what's coming out several months in advance is is excellent not only on the back end for for efficiency uh, uh, and security and lack of panic attacks uh, but also the opportunity to say and next month we're going to be looking at X Y and Z which yeah. Megan speaks to that bringing people back for the next round mm -hmm. uh, uh, now the key of course is that the next thing needs to be exciting needs to be something that is going to compel people to say, ooh, I need to come back for that. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that idea of the frontier. Uh, uh, definitely for the starting episodes, I think it's it's vital that, you know, obviously Dennis has the experience with the vocal experience. Uh, uh, Jenna has the editorial experience. Nimit has the, 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 the painting and the illustration, the artistic, the artisan pr perspective. And Jay, you bring storytelling. So by all means, let's explore those aspects you know we can do at least a couple of episodes on serialized audio fiction and audio books and so on and so forth 
uh, uh, definitely, my God, illustration. Uh, you got cover books, cover art. You've got web comics. You've got uh, interior design. There's all kinds of ways to explore that and storytelling. But then s launch out from there. Uh, uh, let's let's explore. You know, bring on Andrea Phillips, uh, uh, Robert Pratt, and talk about transmedia storytelling and what that is. Mm -hmm. I just had a great. I saw a great fa uh, blog post on Facebook um, about uh, some computer games being presented as digital literature and that's the first time I've heard that mm. and and they cited a bunch of indie games that I have absolutely never heard of and no experience of and that can't happen in this day and age there should be no digital literature uh, uh, that we don't know about so mm -hmm. so exploring those aspects again hit the fringe go to the edge look to the future and invite that vision and then talk about how that can get grounded and monetized and processed and distributed mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and keep that going forward. The only other quest I would have is, Nimit, would you say something and then run your hand through your hair again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, right now. Do it. Do it. Come on. Let me see it. I think Cornflakes oh, is a superior cereal. I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, <laughs> God, that was gorgeous. That was fabulous. Uh, I don't it's pay him for his hair. I just pay him for his hair. <laughs> um, okay, well, I guess as my closing... Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us um, and for making the effort, especially those of you who had um, extra difficulties getting here. I really appreciate that you came... Um, this is all very, very good, and I, I think what I'm really excited about, I like the way that you guys are, I think we definitely should start where we're at already, where we live and talking about those things, um, definitely. talking about serialized content, even real-time content, how that looks. We, um, I did, I'm soft launched, and we're kind of working towards launching a Patreon page that is not so much about support as it is kind of a paywall into more real-time content that you can get your hands on. Um, and trying to just kind of break down all of that, like how does that come together? And that goes into the monetizing and the business side as well. Um, we have a lot to work on. I don't want to make a commitment right now as to what we should talk about next, but I'm really excited to get around to talking about it. We'll be in discussion. Um, and I don't feel like I have anything to add right now because I think that you guys have brought up a lot. My envelope is very... Very full. Um, <laughs> I was gonna buy a big number, a, a big envelope next time, right? I'm gonna need a much. I'm gonna need a Manila envelope, um, or one of the one of these guys. I should probably just write on next time and go with that. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you who are watching or listening, thank you so much for coming. We would love to hear from you as well. What is it that interests you most? What is it that you're struggling with the most? What can we help you with, or what can we confess? live that we actually don't know how to do because we don't know what we're doing either. We're more than willing to struggle through this with you. So thank you so much for tuning in to the nil episode of Creative Minds and we really look forward to providing you with hopefully a nugget of help in the future. Thanks. <laughs>